Mickey Speedway USA is one of those weird games that has absolutely no business being good. On the surface, this game looks like a cheap Mario Kart knockoff with Mickey characters, until you learn that the game was made by Rareware, which means that it's actually a knockoff of Diddy Kong Racing. Now, at first I was wondering why or how on earth Rareware ended up working on a game like this. But after thinking about it for a second, the whimsical, cartoony charm of their games is actually a pretty nice fit for a Mickey Mouse themed game. In fact, there's an interview with some of the Banjo-Kazooie team that said that the whole aesthetic of Banjo was derived loosely from Disney films. So I guess it all comes full circle. The story is that the weasels have kidnapped Pluto because he has a valuable collar. Why they didn't just take the collar off of him and leave him alone is beyond me. Even though these guys are trying to avoid Mickey and friends, they keep sending them postcards of where they are. Now I have to wonder, if you're trying to avoid getting caught, why would you send postcards to your pursuer? That doesn't make sense to me. What makes even less sense is if they were trying to stay undetected, why would they go to such popular tourist locations like Washington DC, the Grand Canyon, or New York City? I gotta say, there's something kind of dystopian about seeing Mickey as Lady Liberty. Perhaps it's a metaphor for corporate overlords such as Disney subverting American freedom for their own gains. Also, even though this game was released in 2000, I don't see the World Trade Center. Combine this with Mickey as Lady Liberty. Is this game trying to tell us something? Right off the bat, it's very clear that the game is trying to be Mario Kart. It even has that starting boost thing. But in the game's defense, the graphics are actually way better than Mario Kart. For instance, the racers are all actual 3D models. Unless they get too far away, then they become sprites. Surprisingly, the game actually handles extremely well. Turning and drifting just feels very correct. They even have that trick from Diddy Kong Racing, where if you press B while drifting, you can drift harder to make pinpoint turns when necessary. That's pretty cool. Unfortunately, it also took some of the bad parts from Mario Kart 2. The items, just like Mario Kart, are random, with better chances of getting better items if you're further behind. They even have literally all the same items from Mario Kart 2. The Mushroom, the Starman, the Red Shell, the Blue Shell. Despite its clear inspiration from Mario Kart and Diddy Kong Racing, the game is surprisingly good in its own right. The graphics are decent, the music is actually amazing. <laughs> And the game has voice acting. All the characters have many lines of dialogue, which is cool. Only problem is they never shut the fuck up. Even when they're all on the other end of the map, you can hear everything they say clear as day. It's cute for the first little while, but eventually it just gets really annoying. Could you imagine if Mario Kart was like that? You can choose between six different characters, plus some unlockable ones later on. I always play as Goofy, because you just don't fuck with that guy. Goofy is huge. I know he's only this big on TV, but in real life, Goofy could be the dad. Kid, what are you doing? You just scarred your baby brother for life here. You put the fear of God into him. Wait, no. Not the fear of God. The fear of Goof. This game actually has a pretty cool exploration component. Scattered around the world are vehicle parts, which unlock a bonus set of tracks. Honestly, it feels weird saying this, but this game is actually good. It's damn good. It's no Diddy Kong Racing, but considering it's a licensed game based on a franchise that's now 90 years old, it's very impressive. It's a testament to just how good Rareware used to be, that they could make a game based on a cartoon actually good and that makes it an important piece of history.